Good morning. Thank you for joining me for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Today is Saturday the 4th. Yes. And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the Book of Mormon. They wear stiff necks and high heads, yea, and because of pride and wickedness and abominations and whoredoms, they have all gone astray, save it be a few, who are the humble followers of Christ. Nevertheless, they are led that in many instances they do err because they are taught by the precepts of men. Second Nephi chapter 28 verse 14. Hugh Nibley observed that the words of the prophets can be held to the tentative and defective tests that men have devised for them. Science, philosophy, and common sense all have a right to their day in court, but the last word does not lie with them. The last word is a testimony of the gospel that comes only by direct revelation. Our Father in heaven speaks it, and if it were in perfect agreement with the science of today, it would surely be out of line with the science of tomorrow. Let us not, therefore, seek to hold God to the, learn, to the learned opinions of the movement when he speaks the language of eternity. The humble followers of Christ must exercise discernment when they engage the philosophies of the world and the precepts of men. Human theories may have a purpose to some extent, but we certainly would not want to build a foundation of faith on such shifting sand. I think that's very rel relevant for today. Okay. Today is Saturday, which is our general conference talk. Uh, the Spark of Faith. Oh, he was Bishop Henry B. Eyring, first counselor in the presiding bishopric at the time. Interesting. 1986. Um, in this talk, he, it's about those who have a spark of faith. Like, you know... Uh, even a grain of mustard seed, the the spark of faith that's so dim that you can barely see it, um, is it even worth fanning type talk. Um, he says that J. Reuben Clark gave this quote that he carries around with him. He says, It is my hope and my belief that the Lord never permits the light of faith wholly to be extinguished in any human heart, however faint the light may glow. The Lord has provided that there shall still be that there shall still be there a spark which with teaching, with the spirit of righteousness, with love, with tenderness, with example, with living the gospel, shall brighten and glow again, however darkened the mind may have been. And if we shall fail to if we shall fail so to reach those among us of our own whose faith has dwindled low, we shall fail in one of the main things which the Lord expects at our hands. Um, that's kind of the, the basis around this whole talk is what can we do to help those who have fading faith? Um, he, he says that he, President Clark has suggested things to do and one is to teach. Teaching is first. To teach, and what do we teach? We teach nothing save it be the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, he gives the example of Alma, um, the younger, when he's harrowed up in darkness, how he says, I remember my father teaching about Jesus and his atoning, his atoning sacrifice. And in that moment, I caught hold of that, and I cried out to him, have mercy on me, and he was saved just because he remembers his father teaching about Jesus. Um, um, and then he says that we need to love them because they're not going to catch on, on to hold on to this faith unless they have a softened heart. And how do they have a softened heart if we're constantly just like yelling at them, berating them? It comes by our love. Um, uh, 
How then can we keep reaching out in a spirit of righteousness with love and tenderness? And then he talks about Mormon and he wrote to his son Moroni and how he's like, uh, let's see. What does he say? Uh, let's see. Yeah. He's saying that when Mormon mo wrote to Moroni, uh, it was a very, very difficult time, very evil time, fighting, bloodshed, carnage, you know, people dying right and left, the, the righteous dwindling completely to where it's only Moroni left at one point, you know, so it's like, it's pretty bad. But he says that he, he says, don't let your mind focus on the bad. Think about the good. Think about Christ. Think about his atonement. Think about, um, uh, where is it? What does he say? My son, be faithful in Christ and may not the things which I have written grieve thee to weigh thee down unto death, but may Christ lift thee up and may his suffering and death and the showing of his body unto our fathers and his mercy and long suffering and the hope of his glory and of eternal life rest in your mind forever. Um, so he's saying, don't dwell on the bad, dwell on the good. Um, and then he ends this way. President Clark reminds, reminded us at the end of his suggestion that there is and always will be free agency. The spark won't glow brighter until the person tries living the gospel. That is why we hope so much that those we love will be called and will fulfill some assignment, however small. After their choice to serve others, to sacrifice, to try the commandments with promise, the spark of faith ignites even after we have done all we can do. That choice, whether to act on what faith they may have, must be theirs. So there you go. I don't have, like, many more thoughts on this. You know, it was... um was very much like how can you help those who are losing their faith not so much uh well I suppose how to build your own if you feel like yours is lacking two things there learn of Christ love and serve three things I think love and serve are basically hand in hand that's what I believe okay so uh that's all for that um daily reading on prayer Today is day 125. Bon J. Featherstone. A lot of him in here. Sincere repetition. When I pray, it is usually repetitive. Every time I kneel down, I pray for my wife, children, grandchildren by name. I always pray for our beloved prophet and other brethren. I always pray faithfully for all our missionaries, for their personal wel welfare, and for their protection from the evil one. I pray for our great country. I pray for that doors to other nations will be opened. Of the last thousand prayers that I have offered, the above items would have been prayed for a thousand times. Repetition? Of course, but sincere repetition. The Lord is offended by vain repetition. Vain repetition, I think, is when we kneel down and say, oh, our Fa Heavenly Father, and then we say words that are repetitious and habitual, but our mind are on what we are going to do after we pray or what we are going to do the next day or what we are going to do or what's going on in the other room while we are praying. Heavenly Father finds out that we really didn't want to talk to him. Ooh. <sighs> That's good. I, you always wonder about the vain repetition because they don't expand on it too much, you know. I pray the same thing all the time. Please protect my family. I'm grateful for the day that I had. Um, please deliver me from temptation and, you know, stand by my side. I don't think those are vain. I want my family to be protected. I am grateful for the day that I had. I do want to be delivered from temptation, you know. So I don't think those are vain. Anyways, um... General conference goals. Today's Saturday, which is supposed to be a temple day. 
it's re it's really been hard to get myself to go really hard considering that Saturday is like really my only day but what better way to have a better week than to give what you do have King Benjamin calls us calls us to say to ourselves if I had I would give what do I have give that that was yesterday's love it do it okay I will make an appointment and I will go. I can do it. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I can do it. Okay. Haven't listened to him. Haven't prayed possessor of all things. I think I don't want to give up the names because I feel like, you know, I don't know. We'll see. It's only been three weeks. I might be giving up the names there. I'm not connecting with them. So I might give that up, but I really need to try harder at the hymns. I really do. So I'm going to try harder at the hymns and then the covenant book. We went to bed late last night and it was there by my bedside and I meant to pick it up, but I didn't. Instead, I looked at lunches for the upcoming week because that's an issue I'm having anyway. Okay. <laughs> doing great on goals. Uh, but, uh, like Carrie said in the comments, I need to remember what heavenly father says about me and not what Satan's trying to point out. So, all right. Today is the fourth Mosiah chapter five. They highlight verse eight. We're doing a, a, a read it, do it. One meaning of taking on someone's name is to take on their character. What is the characteristic of Christ? You, what is a characteristic of Christ you admire? Take upon you the name of Christ. That's okay. Okay. Tomorrow is fast Sunday. I just realized that. Okay. All right. That's all for today. I know. Super exciting. Great video. Um, that's all for today. Tomorrow. Oh, that was the spark of faith by Henry B. Eyring from 1986. And tomorrow we do Mosiah chapter six. We will see you then. Have a great day. Bye.